What's going on beautiful people out there on the internet? My name is Ace and today we're going to be covering the M Creator change log for the new 2024.4 update that just came out. We do M Creator tutorials as well as updating our own mod using M Creator on this channel. So this is going to be a pretty prevalent update, uh, not only for myself, but probably for you all if you're watching this video as well. They are they are really, really hyping it up. I have not read a single thing on this. So uh, without further ado, let's hop right into it. So first and foremost, it looks like you can now use mCreator to develop resource packs, which is a, a new feature, a new ability of mCreator that it completely did not have before. You can see here it says expanding to an entirely new field. Uh, one can now make resource packs using our Minecraft mod making software resource pack maker features a completely different UI where the structure of vanilla resources is shown together with several utilities that allow one to modify and override those resources using our built in image editor code editor and more. So I don't think this will affect our channel very much, but a very cool update nonetheless. Although this part is super cool as resource pack editing was also added to regular workspaces so one can easily override vanilla resources as part of NeoForge or Minecraft Forge mods so that's really cool. <laughs> But this one right here probably blows that previous change out of the freaking water. It looks like there are now vanilla custom entity animation support, which is just super freaking cool because the Gecko Lib M Creator plugin is no longer necessary. It looks like everything this plugin could do is now just built right into M Creator by default, which is awesome. I do love having less dependencies for my mod. That way, if people want to keep their mod limits low, they no longer need to download the Gecko Lib mod. So, this is just freaking dope can use not only vanilla entity animations but also your custom entity animations they also highly recommend using entity animations in combination with saved synced entity data which uh, i'm assuming will allow for very dynamic in, uh, animations and allowing for them to be specialized one big question i have for this and we're just gonna have to wait and see is whether or not we can have animations play at specific moments for example one big problem with gecko lib uh m creator plugin is the attack animations play pretty much right after the enemy has attacked so if you have a build up or a charge in your animation and then you want it to attack about midway through the animation it just doesn't work so hopefully we can add some sort of delay or maybe have the animation trigger a little bit early and it looks like there's a whole new tab so we can manage our animations as well. All in all, this is a freaking huge change and this is gonna be awesome. We also now have the ability to make a sapling plant type, which is very cool because previously making saplings that grew into trees were just a lot of code and work on the front end, but it looks like now you can make it with just a few clicks, which is very, very cool. I'm not sure how much, um, you can also define a specific feature that grows from the sapling with, it says quite some configuration. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what that'll mean and how many checks we can add, how much work we'll still have to do on the front end. But nonetheless, this is a very cool addition. I do love to see, you know, steps closer to vanilla. But, you know, nonetheless, this is a, is a really, really cool addition one way or the other. It looks like here they have a two by two tree, which is really cool because this is a little bit annoying to code in with hard coding, but it's growing into an end portal. So it definitely seems like there is definitely quite some configuration available, which is very cool to see. Wow, this is, uh, this is super cool. Uh, it looks like there is now a sprite component in the GUI. The texture sprite will allow you to make a tiled texture to show different textures on one region. I can already think of multiple instances in our mod where that can be useful. But just for a couple of examples here, it says mana bar progress bars should now be much easier. Now, of course, you're still going to have to combine these with procedures. But before you'd have to make multiple images, stack them on top of each other and then have display conditions to create things like progress 
progress bars. So it looks like hopefully that's going to be a little bit easier now, which is always a very cool thing to see. Some GUI component locking is really nice. This is definitely a, a quality update. Uh, it says this update adds quite some user experience improvements, and this is definitely one of them. You can now lock certain components of the GUI and that prevents them from moving, which ensures you don't accidentally drag them around. I will say uh, I've had problems before where if I have one big image in the background, if I lock that image, will it still lay over top of the other images sometimes or will it automatically kind of push it to the back so that I can still select things, right? Like if I have it overlaying, is there going to be some issues with what I'm clicking and, and whatnot? So we'll have to play around with this, but this is definitely a, a good change. Some really cool changes to custom fluids. Now we only have one custom fluid in our mod, so I'm a little unfamiliar with how they were before, but it looks like you can now specify an overlay texture that is overlaid over the player's view when submerged, as well as an optional fluid fog, specify fog color, and even fog start and end distance as well as procedurally configuring it, which is very, very cool, allowing for some interesting fog effects while in fluid. We have a brief snapshot of what the new uh, fluid uh, UI looks like when you're making a custom fluid, which is very cool. And we have an example here. Now, I'm not sure why all these fish are on their side. That's a little strange, but yeah, this looks really, really cool as a custom fluid. But perhaps something even cooler here is water loggable plants. We already mentioned plants got a new type, but that's not all. Plants can now be configured to be water loggable, finally allowing one to make proper underwater plants, which is just so freaking cool and something that really should have been an M creator a long time ago. So this is awesome. It looks like as long as you're playing in 1.21.1, which subtly implies that this will not be available on Forge, but only on Curse Forge, or excuse me, only on Neo Forge, I should say, uh, mCreator will allow you to run your data packs directly from mCreator itself, which is really cool. You no longer have to export the mod and install it locally to test out changes. Instead, you just click the play button and Minecraft will launch with your data pack already loaded. Now, I'm curious as if this will include mods as well. Like if I want to play with Jade installed, could I potentially do that? Because that could be very, very cool. But I suppose we'll have to wait and see. A nice little change here for people who really know what they're doing. Uh, Minecraft will now, or mCreator, will now monitor Minecraft's uh, CPU and memory so that you can kind of see, you know, how it's doing and how it's performing while you're testing stuff out, which is, of course, a really nice change for people that really care about that stuff. How cool is that? It's, it's very cool, to be honest with you. But moving it right along, I can't help but notice we've only gone through about half of the change log over here, and we've already seen so many cool freaking changes. And this one is uh, definitely no exception. It looks like item and block special info got some improvements. The first one is that hard-coded special information entries are translatable. Existing entries will automatically be added to the localization tab for you to translate, which is very, very cool. So now all parts of your mod can be translated, which is very cool. Doesn't help us specifically, but very cool change nonetheless. This change right here doesn't seem like much until you read this part down here, but let's start up here. It looks like there is a new line block now that can be added to string blocks. Uh, and yeah, it says while this alone might not be that much, we also have new line handling and dynamic special info, which is super cool because if you take a look at this down here, you can now have multiple lines of dialogue that are all dynamically handled and change depending on the item, which is really cool. For example, we have an oxygen tank in our mod, and we can now probably display the amount of oxygen left in the tank so that players aren't left wondering or guessing or looking at the durability bar to figure it out, which is really cool. And here we have a 
ton of really cool changes to dimensions whereas before if you wanted to add new custom dimensions we were pretty limited in what we could do which is part of the reason why my mod doesn't have any unique dimensions but it looks like they've added a ton of new parameters including noise size which can be scaled vertically and horizontally sea level can be specified and you can also disable ore veins or aquifers if you want but that's not all because there are also other parameters such as a fixed time a coordinate scale infinite burn block tags custom default effects has clouds cloud height sky type does sun height affect fog ambient light whether this biome is safe for piglins has raids and monster block spawn light limit so this is you can set the light required for monsters to spawn which is just such a cool change overall this is awesome and a huge step forward for dimensions and m creator really cool third party referencing using mod element tags uh we can now reference other mod elements from other mods obviously such as blocks items entities and more in tags which is really cool it allows you to check if a certain entity block etc is type from an external mod which is just a huge really cool quality of life change something pretty interesting the music discs have been merged into a regular item mod element which i'm assuming saves a little bit of space on their end but also allows you to do some pretty cool unique things with music discs such as allowing them to be eaten have ranged attacks melee damage and even inventory for storage which is really really cool especially because I've been wanting to add a music disc for a while to my mod anyway, so this is just, this is pretty sweet. A really cool update to world gen feature placement, it says here, have you struggled to make valid placement definitions for your custom features? This is no longer a problem, as the new update here features a tool that allows you to specify your desired feature placement using a wizard. And if we take a look at it down here, it looks like we can easily specify rarity, frequency in single chunks, the height settings and what height map it spawns on, whether we want it to surf, uh, spawn in the surface of water depth, min surface water depth, and then some offset settings over here, allowing us to offset it, only place in valid positions for, require solid block below, and only placed on. So this could be a very, very cool change. It allows us to you know a lot of things that features would have anyways, just quickly define, which is very cool. I do kind of wish that we could check for like a larger space, for example, if we were growing a tree, if we could check in like a three by three area at an uh, X number of blocks tall or an, a, a Y number area or something like that. But maybe that can come in a future update. But either way, I'm not complaining about this. So this took a little bit to understand, but there are now potion effect modifiers allowing us to modify our custom attributes using potions. So let's say we have a potion here. It looks like they have a potion called Lucky Day. We can then add an attribute modifier which modifies your armor toughness toughness by 0.5. It looks like the base is multiplied by half when you're lucky and your flying speed is multiplied by 0 0.25 which is very cool to be honest with you so we can now have even more dynamic potions which is i mean awesome in another really cool change here we can now change the creative tab order so it says here one can not only specify the order of items in the tabs but the order of the tabs themselves which is very very cool i mean I think it was already sorted by alphabetically, and that's probably how I'll keep mine, because I like that, but that's really cool. You have pretty much full control over how your tabs are organized and how all of your items are organized in the creative tab. And here's what I personally have been waiting for, some huge steps forward in the block state property system. Although it does look like if you want fully integrated block states, you're still going to have to use Nerdy's block state plugin. However, let's read what these changes do. 
mCreator will now indicate the number of possible state property combinations to make sure you don't add too many, which is actually a problem that I had almost immediately after this change came out, so that's really cool to see. And they've also made it possible for custom blocks to reference existing predefined vanilla block state properties, which is just super cool. I think this is going to be super useful for like crops and crop growth stages. We can now reference age properties and stuff like that. So we can tie them in better with mods such as Jade and other existing game mechanics, which is always a very cool, very good sign. And last but not least, we have a couple of UI improvements to mCreator as a whole, so it looks a bit prettier with both UIs with a custom background image and without them. It says here, can you spot all these new details? And personally, I don't really see much change other than this little icon in the corner, which I'm not sure what it means, but you know, whether it's noticeable or not, I am not going to complain. I think it looks totally fine. And if people don't like it, I'm sure they'll switch back pretty quickly. So all in all, this is a very, very cool update and it's got just an absolute ton of new changes. So real quick, let's read some of the release notes and the important bug fixes. And then I'll skim the other improvements just to see if there's anything worth uh, mentioning to y'all. But here it just has a note about music disc mod element types being automatically converted to regular item types with all of their settings presumably set the same. Although if you have any music discs in your mod, you'll probably want to check that out. And and then the dimension mod element obviously has undergone some pretty heavy uh, changes here. It says that existing mod elements will be converted automatically, but once again, if you have any custom dimensions in your mod, you'll definitely want to check them, make sure that all their settings are set up properly still and it's working how you want it to. The bug fixes here, this one looks like it's specifically for NeoForge, where using slot dependency on certain GUI procedure triggers caused build errors. Another one for setting item stack variables did not work correctly in some cases. The Java plugin events could trigger after the action they were listening to happened in some cases, which is pretty interesting. I think that I've had this occur with some of my advancement triggers, so we'll see if that actually is fixed or not. And the index of string procedure block caused build errors in some cases. So I don't think uh, most of these affect us in our mod, except possibly this one, but we will uh, have to wait and see. And this just looks like the TLDR version of what we just read, so I'm not really seeing any changes or differences in here. So without further ado, that's pretty much going to do it for today's video. You can of course download mCreator at the link in the description, whether you already have it installed or just need to download the new update. But please let me know what you guys think of this update in in the comments below because personally I am just absolutely blown away for it and more than that I am excited for the future of mCreator and what it's going to offer in probably the very near future but without further ado I hope you all enjoyed if you did like and subscribe and that really would mean a lot but I'll catch you in the next video